regimented lifestyle. The Lord said to that woman by the angel, Madam, although every other woman that is pregnant can misbehave, but not you. Other pregnant women can eat anything, drink strong drinks, but not you. And this woman, God designed a lifestyle for her. It was a personal instruction. Sensing himself, God designed a lifestyle for him. It was personal instruction. Children of his mates can misbehave, but Samson, you don't. You are a special person. You are designed for a special purpose. I want to challenge all of you here in this meeting. Do you know that God designed you to be a firebrand you are not like ordinary person that's why you are here some of your friends you tell them you are coming here they say i don't want to go to that place there is something in you that is yearning to know god more there is something in you that is attached to god there is something in you that is drawing from God. It does appear to you that without God, you have no future. I want to announce to you, you are specially made. You are not like others. So do not, and I repeat, do not equate yourself with them. Don't see yourself like others. This was one of the things that helped me when I was growing, I sense in my spirit there is a hand of the Lord upon my life. I sense in my spirit that God designed me to be an instrument of power. Therefore, I begin to put my life under divine mold. Whenever God wants to use a life, he will form a mold for that life and force that life squeeze that life into that mold Kai, when that life passes the mold of God divine formation it becomes a brand fire brand some of you do you know your problem you refused to adapt to divine mold they fashioned as he wish and sometimes if you don't want to obey peacefully he will force you through the mold and by the time he force and squeeze you through the mold the mold of divine instruction God formed that mold for Samson and told the mother and the father number what now eh? five Samson's mother understand and also understood sorry and adhered strictly to divine commandment. The mother of Samson understood this mold and she adhered strictly to these instructions. Listen to me, friends. How do I know that the mother of Samson understood? I know because she narrated verbatim word to word all that the angel of the Lord told her everything the angel of the Lord spoke to her she narrated the same to her husband this is the mold the Lord made for me and this is the mold the Lord made for our child Samson the mother of Samson understood the language of God. Some of you, your mother, when she was pregnant, 
she had an encounter with the spirit of God she obeyed the Lord some of you heaven gave your parents your name your name before I married God gave me the names of my children I was a bachelor but I learned to pray into my future some of you do you know why when your future comes you begin to struggle with your future you begin to see challenges you cannot surmantle it's because you have not been taught to pray into your future some young girls that are here you don't want to pray for your marriage now perhaps to you no suitor has come you want a man to propose to you first then you will begin to pray it will be reactive prayers some young brothers you want to come to the age of marriage then you will begin to pray or you want even to propose to the girl you like and then you begin to pray and say God confirm it it will be a reactive prayers the problem of the church is that we pray reactive prayers not proactive prayers reactive prayer is when something has already happened and you begin to run around and pray proactive prayer is praying into your future have you never heard that a woman was delivering a baby and she died have you heard that thing as a young girl have you prayed lord when i will be delivering my babies i will never die have you prayed that prayer proactive prayers pray proactive prayer I will never have delay in marriage and also have delay in childbearing. Pray and begin to beg God for the sex of your babies. Chuku achoram ebu muzo be bere sichi neke achoram emu wine. Achoram ebu zo mutangoke. Kongo e ne 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 unye maka we pa kondo zon. And I'm enjoying it today. Seriously speaking, one of my best friends is my daughter. She was here last year. On Sunday, I came to conclude this meeting. I came with her. That's what I want. That's what I want. She will come close to the room. Mommy and daddy, you have not talked about your dinner. What will you eat? Sitchinek and I hancho. I put on Kiyan on an app, I snow on a bubble. Pray into your future. Pray into your future. Prayer is an investment. Some of the benefits, dividends I'm enjoying today, we had Sotarana tongues many years ago. 
katupa labu shalete po in a download information, na transfer information, na download. Imam, pray into your future. Some of the things I enjoy today, be bere bere yes, they do so bauzo. I say, be bere mechion. Somebody say that closed mouth is like a closed destiny. I believe you to an extent. Sister, dear baby, don't bother. Pray. Ne si no non gaba. Ga be blessing to that my own family. Ne si no non gaba. Ma be blessing to that family. Ne si no non gaba. Ma muta woke muta wai. Ah ah. Dear baby, you are praying into the future. Mwa muka ma wwa misi. Mwa wwa nya ma wwa misi. Any child that will come from my loins will never be a disgrace to his generation. It will not be a reproach. It will be a blessing. Pray into your future. Pray into your future. Says the Spirit of God. Because I believe it was the Spirit that dropped it in my heart for somebody else. Don't pray reactive prayers. Pray proactive prayers. The Lord will bless your understanding. I didn't hear a convincing amen. What was God's design lifestyle for Samson? Kedinye chineke roro asmoj. Amu bero sansino. Amu bero ya. Announcement ka kanye. Do you know what I do bero yime? Manande ni kwa arugo di moj. For his life. That's why in Juhu Emara. That if you want your future to be captured. Pray into it. There is nothing I don't pray about. I pray over anything. This year, I pray for three things. I have accomplished two. I'm dealing with the third one. Next year, I am praying for two things. Next year, 2019, I am praying for just two things. Two. Two things is my major concern. Pray. Kalabo shalata. Zibro kutelibra katuliba. Pray into your future. Paro Pray for the day of your project submission. Pray for the day of your project defense. In a same nick and second year. Eh, a quicker year the project. Pray. Pray that those who will sit in that defense, I shall be favored before them. In a but as that day, Hannah smile. See, you look nice. I like your shoe. Anyway, you are her past. Pray into your future. The Lord will help you. Now, there are four things, basically, that the Lord designed as a mold for Samson. And if you want to be a firebrand, you must walk in the light of the last message. I'm proud that the message was dubbed. Praying that the woman of God will have more entrances to share on that angle. Because I want to leave it for her. Four basic things. Look at verse 5. First, sorry, Judges chapter 13 verse 5. For lo, thou shalt conceive... And bear a son. Number one. No razor shall come on his head. Number two. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto the Lord from the womb. Number three. He shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Somebody shout hallelujah. Immediately I saw the word. Nazarite. I checked the Bible to know the code of conduct for Nazarite. A Nazarene, what is the code of conduct? 
You can see that in number chapter 6. Can you write it? Because I won't finish the reading for time. Numbers chapter 6. In the book of Numbers chapter 6, God gave Moses the code of lifestyle for anyone who fall under the category of being a Nazarite. Nazarite is different from Nazareth. Nazareth is a place currently in the present Israel. I was privileged to be in Israel for pilgrimage some years back. The first place we lodged for three days was Nazareth. Jesus Christ came from Nazareth. But Nazareth is an order, a kind of lifestyle people choose for themselves or God programs somebody to become. A Nazarene, a Nazarite is somebody whose life is coded by four major things. Number one, separation. A Nazarite is a person that is separated from things unto God only. It's like a dedicated person to God. Number two, a Nazarite we have nothing to do with alcoholic drinks or beverages. Anything that is beer, hot drinks, strong drinks is not made for Nazarites. Number four, Nazarites, at a certain point, they don't shave their hair. There was a time that Paul, in the New Testament, in the sworn an oath of a Nazarite for a period of time. When he was done with that oath and consecration, he went to the synagogue and then shaved his hair and his beard. So a Nazarite does not shave hair. Otherwise, he go burn to two for years. For years. For years, I met a musician from Israel, a Jewish musician. He said he is a Nazarite. Oh, Buddhist in Tutu as a symbol. He had foreign day man and a bodada. Man and Kayadra Kada don't want to can Kayad or watch all over. Watch all over, watch all over, was him and Muli Nin Tutua, Narezo, Abanabaya, Nititia. No more you go, will be a three way down. Matiti is the rezo. Ochai Afisiana has not done it since Yajiwe Moya. And when this man started singing, oh God, you see how the heaven and the earth is coming into fellowship. Another number four thing a Nazarite should avoid dead bodies. A Nazarite should not have contact with anything around. In fact, one of the oaths is that even when your father or your mother or your brother or your sister died, you will not see the corpse. Not, you will not, not even touching. You will not see. It's a high profile consecrated life. It's a dedication life that is in a higher order. Jesus is looking for those who will dedicate themselves to him and separate from any other things. So this was the life of Nazarite. And Samson supposedly was called to live such a life. And this premise I want to begin to share outlining to you the weaknesses of Samson. What I found in the scriptures to be Samson's weaknesses. In chapter 1, sorry, in verse 1 of chapter 14, the Bible opened with this phrase, and Samson went down. 
If you read verse 5, and then went Samson down. I discovered the first weakness of this brother is that although the mother made it clear to him who he is supposed to be the kind of life he's supposed to live the kind of person expected of him however he chose to live differently Samson did not adhere strictly as it were to the divine regimented lifestyle coded by God for him God has already programmed the lifestyle of Samson in order for him to be a firebrand. However, he chose to live on the opposite side of the law. This moment, my friends, when you look at the Holy Bible, you see God outlining before us the kind of lifestyle that should be the lifestyle of any human being who wants to become a fire branch. However, some people are living the opposite side of this life. Hence, the word of God is coming to you. Do you want to be a fire branch? Do you want to be an instrument in the hand of God? Do you want to be a vessel unto honor? Do you want to begin this race and finish well? Because in this heavenly race, it is not how far, it's how well. Some people might hear welcome in the church, but they will never hear well done by the Lord. When you visit church or fellowship, they will tell you welcome. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. I can see you. Man, the glory at the morning. I equal. I can see you. That glory of the. I say, shake them, shake them. The man and equal. You are welcome. You are welcome. Have you not known that having said to you welcome by the church members is not enough until heaven said to you, well done, my beloved son. Well done, my beloved daughter. Jesus is not looking for fans. He's looking for followers. On the man you na asina na the man na cho fans. Jesus said that cho are fans. He's looking for those who will follow him. Jesus is not looking for admirers. Those who will admire him. And I go with an ophonia brooch. Oh, radical for Jesus. Oh, Jesus, I love you. These are admirers of Jesus. He is not looking for admirers. He's looking for men and women who will adhere strictly to his instructions. Samson went away from this code. He goes places without being regimented. His life was not regulated as it were. And this is the beginning of his fall. Is there any young lady here who wants to live an independent lifestyle? Your life is full of yourself. You don't want people to monitor or superintend over your life. You want to live your life by yourself and for yourself. You don't care about what people say. You can never be a firebrand. You can never be an instrument of power. Prodigal son, go and ask him his questions. There was one problem of that boy. And I don't want you to make the same mistake. The prodigal son came to the father and said to him, First, give me. Give me the portion of goose that falleth to me. 
And the father never hesitated. The father never queried his action. The father gave him. He left far away from the father. He detached from the father. He disconnected from the father to a place where he has no source. Father was his source. His father was his source. He drew strength from the father. Suddenly he detached from the father and went away. Right there, he began to be in lack. Because there is no more source to supply, to replenish. It was when he messed up himself, squandered all the father gave him, that he returned back to the father and knelt before him in pleading and said, make me one of your servants. How I wish that young man said to the father first, make me. Before saying to him, give me. So many of you, you are saying, God, make me a firebrand. That is what you need to pray. God, give me power. Give me anointing. Give me power. Give me spiritual gifts. When a man or woman is not made, give him anything, he will waste it. The first thing is not giving you, my brother. The first thing is making you. The first thing is not giving you anything, my sister. I want to operate in this kind of gift. I want to operate in this kind of gift. I want God to give me this, give me that. The mistake of the prodigal son is that he firstly said to the father, Give me. Before coming back, after wasting it all, to say to his father, What? Make me. May you not repeat that mistake in the name of Jesus Christ. The second thing about Samson's weakness is marriage by sight. Marriage by sight. In chapter 14, verse 2. And Samson came up and told his father and his mother, and said, I have seen a woman in Timnant of the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore get her for me for wife. And his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren or among all my people that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleases me well. Marriage by sight. Listen. In your program, I saw space for marriage seminar. So I wouldn't like to spend that time. But can I tell you that your marriage is a determinant for whatsoever you will become in life. When you make mistake in marriage, every other thing around you will collapse. If your marriage is not constant, nothing in your life can be stable. If your marriage is not stable, the stability of your marriage is the stability of whatever you will become. Please bear that in mind. Do not marry by sight. You just come into this fellowship and you see a young lady. She presented a special number. I said, I have a special number to render. Listen and be blessed. Jesus. Jesus. It's an can. I'm once up in email already. Ijemaburia. Yeah, I'm a marriage by sight you came into the fellowship you met a brother praying vibrating like Nokia 3310 and let us say sister please can I talk to you briefly by the grace of God I am brother so and so I'm the prayer coordinator of this fellowship. 
as I was praying. Mm. <laughs> the Lord opened my eyes in the spirit. And I saw. Do not marry by sight. You will regret it. Whatever you see is a fashion. But whatever you find is a treasure. Whatever you see is a fashion. Whatever you find is a treasure. The Bible didn't say whosoever see a woman. The Bible say whosoever find a wife. That is different between a woman and a wife material. Don't marry by sight. The first time Jacob saw Rebecca, he was bent to marry her. And she later married a woman who became a thief. Rebecca stole the household god of his father. The first time Jacob saw her, Jacob was bent to marry her. He served his fa her father seven years. She was given Leah. And she served another seven years, making it 14, just to marry a thief. This girl you have seen, and you are bent to marry her. This boy you have seen, and you are bent to marry him. You never check what form your conviction. Marriage is not a matter of sight. You may see her beauty today. The beauty might not be constant. You may see his money today. The money might not be constant. Whatever you see is a fashion. It fades with time. But whatever you find is treasure. Somebody shout hallelujah. Samson made this mistake. It was one of his weaknesses. Don't make mistake in marriage. You will ever regret it while you live. And you may not make it to heaven because I know there are people today, their marriage will surely lead them to hellfire. In fact, they are already in hell. Doing sample for the men hellfire. Because wrong marriage is hellfire on earth. It is better you don't marry at all than to marry the wrong person. It is better you don't marry at all than to marry the wrong person. Number three. Another weakness of Samson is that out of dead bodies he took sweet things. Chapter 14 verse 8. No, Judges 14 verse 8. And after a time he returned to take her and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. And behold, there was a swan of bees, and honey in the carcass of lion. And Samson took thereof in the hands, and went on eating, and came to his father and mother, and he gave them, and they did it. But he told them not that he has taken the honey out of the dead body of lion those who are Nazarites supposed not to see dead bodies Samson went to dead lion from the carcass of the dead lion he collected honey and he was eating it on the road and when he arrived in his home he gave to his mother and his father and they eat. But he never told them. The Quebens were waiting her. Some of you that are looking at me, out of dead things, you are producing sweet things. Out of dead relationship comes your handsets. Some of you, you are parading undried handsets before your friends. And I say, hey, I say to you, I say to you, now you, okay, bano. you never tell them, it was a young man that had sex with me that actually gave me this. Out of dirtiness, you produce with things. 
Some of you, you parade the results. A, A, B, B, C, C. And you refuse to tell us that you sent a machinery to the exam hall who wrote the exam for you. Actually, you are giving us the results. And I say, hey, they give me a hug. Wonderful result. Excellent result. Somebody, you are showing somebody engagement ring. Say, I have something to show you. Close your eyes. Guess. We just, hey, I'm happy for you. You never tell him that you have had abortion for this boy that gave you engagement rings many, many times. Your testimony may be sweet, but did it come from dirty things? It was from dead lion that Samson produced honey. Took honey, sorry. Where is this your story coming from? What actually from round your story? What you tell us is the sweet part of the story. You never tell us the other side. Sansin never tell his parents that this honey, though it's sweet, it came from a dead lion. My sister, what are you hiding for us? What part of your life we don't know? Why are you presenting one side and keep the other side in dark? Why are you presenting one side and keep the other side in dark? Something out of dead lion produce honey that is sweet. Some people today, those of you that are watching this DVD, maybe you have money. People have seen you riding good car. They hail you for wonderful car, but you never tell us the source of that car. You didn't present to us the exact picture how that car came about. And God is saying to you, are you producing sweet thing out of dead things? It's a warning from God. It's one of Samson's weaknesses. Number four, spirit of lust. It was not the Philistines that conquered Samson. It was the spirit of lust that conquered him. Philistines have no capacity to overcome this great man. Unfortunately, there is something in him that God condemned that he condoned. There is something in him that God asked him to kill that he kept. When you keep what God asks you to kill, you will raise the result will be something in chapter 16 verse 1 then went something to Gaza and saw there a harlot and went in unto her beloved of God I have traveled to many places both in Nigeria and outside Nigeria and I have seen harlots, but I have not went into them. How come the sensei went to Gaza? He didn't see anything good. The only thing he saw was harlot. It's not bad when you see a harlot, but it becomes a matter when you go in and have sex with that harlot. David saw a woman that was taking her bed. Besheza by name. Besheba. Seeing a woman that is naked, for me, is a coincidence. He went at the roof of his house. And from the top of the roof, he looked and saw a woman taking her bed. For me, it was a coincidence. David would have moved out of that environment. But when a man has been captured by the spirit of lust, any singular opportunity the act which is sex will manifest now let me say something to you now lust is a seed the devil usually sow in the life of people the devil
devil is so clever, he knew that you may not commit the act which is sex, but he will deliberately leave the seed in you which is lost. And then you'll be farming it, farming it by providing all kinds of fertilizers, <laughs> pornography. As you watch pornography pictures and film, the lost will be getting graining ground, having roots. As you read all manner of porno, romantic novels and magazines, the roots will be getting more deeper. As you watch home videos, Nigerian movies, African magic, all of these kisses and all of that, you will see the roots will be getting deeper. And the devil I know will only supervise the lost. He deposited in you to grow stronger and then he will begin to open opportunities for you. And that the opportunities is for the act. What do I say? Lost is what? A siege. Sex is an act. But there is what I call spirit of immorality. So many believers, people who claim to be believers, they are still struggling with lust. Seriously. Because there is a deposit of that seed in their lives. And they are doing so many things in order to keep nursing, nurturing this seed. And it's a satanic seed. Spirit of immorality. How can a man like Samson saw a harlot and go inside to have sex with a harlot? A harlot is an embodiment of demons and bundle of diseases. In those days, I know there is no invention of condom. I know condom the Bible says when a man commits sex with a woman, he is the same flesh, the same body with that woman. Those who commit sex with condom may claim, eh, I didn't deposit my sperm in that woman. But sex is not just lying on a woman. It carries spiritual connotations. There is a spirit behind it. Let me advertise that spirit for your knowledge. Beloved of God, when you have a friend as a girl, and maybe two of you are taking bed or sleeping or just quietly discussing. This girl always touch your private part. Not in the real sense of lesbianism. Sometimes she will touch the nipple of your breast. You will now be shocked. Maybe a barrier. What are you doing? That still no matter. Since a signal, there is something she carry. She want to transfer in you. The same thing is about homosexuals. When you have contact with a person who is enslaved with this spirit, and that person have contact with you, maybe by romancing you and you ejaculate, that same day, that spirit is a spirit. It's a spirit. It will be transferred in you. It will be visiting you seldomly as masturbation. Masturbation, when it comes, it comes like a coat that will cover you and you can't do anything else or anything less than to perform that act. And when it's done, it leaves. And whenever it's, it comes again, it's a deposit of a spirit and it's a visiting spirit. Samson contacted this strange spirit and this strange spirit lies in him and that was what destroyed him it was not the Philistines that killed him it was lost 
in his life. I would have liked to show you something. In 2 Samuel chapter 5, just for reference, 2 Samuel chapter 5, David, when he felt he was established by God, when he felt that his kingdom had been established and he had been anointed as king over Israel, the Bible says he took more wives and have more girlfriends, concubines. But when David was running away from Saul, hiding in caves, he don't have any time for women. But immediately he discovered he was established. He began to look for women around. It is very easy to manage poverty, but difficult to manage success. Easy to manage poverty. Difficult to manage success. Success in life, success in ministry, success in academy, success in business, success in everything. It is very difficult to manage it. 